Welcome. Today we're going to take a look at our Haas CNC mill and we're going to do one of our first videos which is going to be basic turning on the machine and maneuvering around some of the controls. So we have here the Haas Mini Mill 2. In order to turn the machine on we're going to use the power on button here. And it's going to go through some basic startup operations so it'll take about a minute for it to boot up in what it needs to do. All right, once we start to see this main screen here, we've also got the light up here blinking. We have some alarms uh, being triggered here, and this is normal for setup. It's gonna not only make sure that some of the resets and safeties are in place, it's also gonna reset the machine back to normal home. So one of the first things we can read that it's asking us to do is re release the emergency stop. So I'm gonna go ahead and usually I'll push just to make sure it's on, and then I'm going to just twist to release. And that goes away, and now it says to open the door. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the door, and you'll notice right here we have a safety interlock switch with a bar, so when it's closed, it knows the door is closed. So now it's actually saying close the door, so it's just testing that that safety interlock is in place and working properly. And now we have pressed the reset or enable servos, so we're gonna hit reset a couple of times to get through all of our errors. And you'll notice now that we have no more <clears throat> errors on the screen. All right, so the machine is kind of like cleaned up, reset, ready to go, but it doesn't necessarily know where it's at. When we're talking about its 0, 0, 0 location, we want to go ahead and do a power up restart, which is going to be right here. And it says power up or zero all axes. So when we hit power up restart, <clears throat> we look inside, I don't know if we can see a whole lot moving, because for the most part it was in the proper location, it was pretty close, uh, but the table moved back and forth into a zero home, and then the spindle up here had moved up into a Z zero home location as well. So now we should have no more blinking messages, no more errors on the screen. Technically, we're ready to start going with whatever program it is we might want to run. One of the other things we typically do early on is we're going to turn the light switch on inside the machine because it's pretty dark in there. So we have some things like some keys over here. We have a USB port to bring our files in. And right down here towards the bottom, <clears throat> we have a button with a light switch. And if we press that, you'll see that the light inside the cabinet turns on. So that helps us to see what we're doing inside of that machine a little bit better as well. One of the first things we typically want to do <clears throat> is move the table around when we get into here because we maybe have to uh, get the vise in the, out of the way or um, zero out the vise or something like that. So we tend to do a, a move. So the last thing I'm going to show you on this basic startup video is how to get into hand jog and move around. So we've got a lot of control buttons within our control window here, and eventually we'll get into more of them. We're not gonna have to know all of them, um, especially from the start. But these <clears throat> vertical icons tend to be some of our control buttons. And next to each of the control buttons tends to be some sub menu items we can get into within each one of those. So we've got hand jog with how fast we want to move. We've got memory with how we can deal with some programs. Uh, we got our programming with what we can do with some of those programs and so on. Um, so as I mentioned, we want to move around. So we're going to go into hand jog. And once we're into hand jog, here it tells us which axis we're highlighted to move in right now. If we were to start moving the wheel, the z-axis is highlighted, so if I were to start moving, the z-axis is going to go up or down, and we can see those numbers changing. I can change how fast or slow that moves with incrementally how far it moves per click of the dial. So the fastest is going to be 100 thou per click. The slowest is going to be way down here at 1 tenth per click. So typically we're going to deal with 
10 thou or 0 0.01 for standard moves when we're trying to move around. So right now we're in 0, 0, 001, 1 thou per click. If I click on 10 thou, that changes here to 0 0.01. In the Z direction, so now I'm moving in the Z. If I want to change the direction from Z to X or Y, over here we've got these dial pads and all I have to do is click X, Y, or Z. So right now I'm in Z, I'm going to go ahead and hit X and it highlights the X. You'll notice that the buttons themselves actually have a X positive, X negative. For the majority of what we're going to do, it does not matter which one you select for those because we're going to use the dial and the dial has a positive and negative on it. So depending on which way we go, the dial is depending on if it's going to go left or right. So it doesn't really matter for the initial purposes of what we're doing, which X, as long as you choose an X and you'll see nothing really changes in the window between which X I'm picking here. It's still highlighting the X channel. So what does that look like? I'm going to click on the X direction. I'm going to click on 10 thou per click. And as I move the dial, it's going to go left or right. So one click. It's barely moving. So if I run it a lot, you'll see it's actually starting to go. You can hear the clicks on the dial. So every time it clicks, it's moving 10 thou. If I want to go on the Y, click on the Y. I'm still in 10 thou. Here it's moving backwards and forward. And then if I go in the Z, you can see the spindles coming down. And the spindle is going up. So this hand deal wheel here has a knob on it so you can easily grab it and just start spinning, which is nice when you're trying to do fast moves. However, anytime we're in the Z direction and we're getting close to the part, I want you to grab the knob like this. It's just like driving a car, right? If you're driving a car and you're in you know, rough weather conditions, you got two handles on the steering wheel, so you got more control on that. If it's a nice sunny day out and the windows are open and there's no traffic around, you might be out there with one hand, that's fine. But as soon as you get in those scenarios where you got traffic or weather, you got two hands on to have more control on that. Same thing here. Anytime we get close to the part that we want to make sure we're not slamming into it, you're going to grab the outside of the wheel because you have more control. You're going to slow down on your movements. But if you're away from the part and you're trying to go quick, you can go ahead and grab out here. One of the reasons that's important is I'll go ahead and move into the 100 thou per click. And I'm going to go ahead and move the table. And you'll see that when I stop moving, it's going to keep moving even though the wheel stopped. And the reason for that is the Haas has memory in regards to how many clicks I've gone. It's still going to keep going those clicks even though I'm moving faster than the machine can keep up with me. So again, that's one of the reasons that it's nice to move with this way out when you're away from the part. But if you've got the tool or the spindle close to something, you don't want to slam into it and break something. So that's where you're going to grab the outside and go uh, with that process. So for shutdown procedures, let's say we're all done with the machine. We've done our operation or we've done our setup. We're ready to walk away for the class period or at the end of the day. Uh, shutdown procedures, typically we're going to power up restart again which is going to get everything back to zeros and put no tool in the spindle. So we're going to hit that. And then I like to hit the e-stop just to release any of the servos and motors. And then we're going to hit power off. And that would be the practice at the end of each class period. I know we have not talked tooling yet. There is no tool in the spindle. And that's typically how we want to leave the machine overnight or over the weekend or over long periods of time because we don't want those tools, tools left in the spindle. And we'll talk about that process when we get into tooling. So in this brief video, we've talked about how to turn on the Haas. We've talked about how to get it set up and ready to go for getting rid of all the error, errors and messages and the 
door and the e-stop. We talked about a power up restart to get everything back to zeros. We did take a brief look at moving the table and spindle around going into the hand jog setting within the controls. And then we looked at a power down or shut down procedure and that was uh, going back to power up restart, hitting the e-stop and turning the machine off. So hopefully this basic video is going to get you uh, a little bit of a comfort on starting up your first project eventually. The next video we're going to do is going to start talking about loading tooling.